Hello again. Graybeard wheeling back on this 2005 uh, Jeep LJ. Um, call it a resto mod, I guess. Bringing it back from unsafe to drive, getting it ready so that my wife and kids can enjoy it. Um, transmission has been leaking on the cooling lines at the radiator. Uh, somebody in the past cut out the factory lines with the hard line running to a, a small soft line section at the radiator. Um, they ran a couple of soft lines along the frame rail, zip tied it in a few places, kind of, sort of, um, had it zip tied to the bottom of the radiator shroud, that uh, fan shroud that is not screwed in. So that's not really ideal. And they had replaced the um, fittings on the radiator. Uh, they took out the, the quick connect uh, fittings and installed um, just uh, something like this kind of deal. Not this one specifically, but something to that effect where they were just able to slide the hose over it and uh, clamp it on there. I am not an automatic transmission guy. I have one automatic transmission vehicle that I've ever owned, my truck, and I've been driving a long time before that, so I am not going to pretend that I'm an expert on automatic transmissions or cooling lines, um, but the OEMs are. So I'm going to put this back to the way it was factory. I got factory cooling lines, um, and I got fittings. It was a little bit of hunt and pack and research to find the right fittings for the uh, radiator to replace the ones that are missing. Um, even the the actual factory parts manual didn't really give me any good leads. Um, so I went to the local parts store and I brought something that I knew threaded into the radiator and compared it to what they had on the shelf. And I came up with Dorman 800-605. So let's turn the camera this guy and once I got that number and started doing some research I did find that it does appear that this is the right one to fit uh, the factory cooling lines with the factory radiator so that's what's gonna go in you need two of them on the radiator I have two. Um, if I can figure out how to throw a quick link in there I will um, see if I can get the camera set here. I also went ahead and, you know, a big part of this channel is proving that you can do a lot on your driveway with what you have. Um, but I'm going to also, from time to time, buy tools. I do geek out on tools a bit. New tool day is always fun. Yep. Folks going around here. Weather's getting warmer. So with that in mind, these fittings have a little spring there. And you can pry it out of there, pop it out of the way to get the, the line out. To get the line in, you can just push past it. It'll spring out and it'll let it in. But to get it out, you gotta get this clip out of the way. So you got two choices. You can use like a fine tip screwdriver or pliers or whatever you get your hands on and pull that clip out and hope it doesn't spring out away from you. I'm going to say that my luck isn't that good and working underneath a Jeep. I'm pretty much going to guarantee that that clip is going to go flying somewhere that I'm never going to find it. You can get them. They're available. They're right on the pegboard at the local auto shop auto parts store um, but they sell toolkits specifically for this stuff um, got this one on Amazon and it's a split hinged circular tool with little nubs on it and the way it works you wrap it around the hose, so the hose would theoretically be through that. Slide it down in here and feel around in there until you get it to where the teeth 
fit between where the spring clip is and then with a little bit of pressure in rotate it and that pushes the clip out so now if we look down here there's no sign of the spring clip it's just a smooth entry there so that tube will come out and as it pulls out it'll pull the tool out and the spring clip pops right back into place ready to go still on the fitting most importantly you haven't lost it so um, you can get these tools individually uh, they are just in usually like a bubble wrap package um, you know it's not necessarily the best made tool this is Lyle tools they're kind of okay home mechanic stuff not really professional grade but if you get this set then it's in the plastic pack so put that on the shelf should be perfectly fine um, so the next test is going to be to get under there get the old connections out I got one out yesterday um, the other one was kind of seized in there and it was cold um, sure there is some uh, Loctite on it and that usually means you need to apply some heat to the barb to get it to release the, the, the Loctite seal. Um, problem here is that transmission fluid is highly flammable, like flammable. Um, so got to be careful. Make sure you got a fire extinguisher handy if you're playing with fire around this stuff. Um, be careful where you're letting that flame go. If you got a lot of fluid leaking all over the place, clean it up first. Get all of it gone, uh, dry it up, and then give it a shot, see what happens. Um, I tried a little bit of heat yesterday, and between the wind and the cold and everything else, um, I got a couple of puffs of fire, and <laughs> it just it wasn't happening. It wasn't worth it. I'm doing this after work, I'm losing daylight already. Um, so yesterday wasn't the day. Um, but yeah, so I gotta get the, the barb fittings out of the uh, out of the radiator, uh, out of the transmission cooler section. I've gotta get the hoses off the transmission at the other end. Um, make sure things are fairly clean. Um, route the new lines, the exhaust is out, so that should be fairly easy. The only thing is, I'm not sure if I got the oil pan stud back in the right spot so I may have to move that stud to a different location and move the bolt that I take out to that location that the stud's in right now. Um, easy stuff. 84 inch pounds back on the bolts, I believe they were. I'll double check that. Um, and we'll go from there. I believe those were 7 16 inch socket. Um, yeah, shouldn't be a big deal. The biggest thing here is, uh, you know, transmission cooling lines okay so there's transmission fluid again it's flammable don't really want to leak it all over the place um, it's you know it's oil and detergent basically you know hydraulic fluid and detergent so it doesn't really need to be on my driveway or on any surfaces of the Jeep other than inside the transmission all right uh, I'm gonna get after it and see where I can get to Okay, so this will be the first time I'm actually trying this tool. I did pop the fitting onto the line. And so, if you're under there, looking at it for the first time, you'd have to pop this little plastic cap off. Screwdriver does that job just fine. And you take your tool, and in theory, you should just be able to open it up, close it on that line, slide it in, and that fitting should be in the vehicle so it shouldn't slip around and we'll just work it until we can get to the point where it's in there and fully releasing that spring and again this is probably a little bit easier if the fitting is actually attached to the vehicle and then it should pop off with some wiggling.
We're making progress, but not there yet. So, that goes in there. Tops loose. Ah, that's what I was doing wrong. So, this tool is going to bottom out on this tube. You can't push it too far in. And once it's got the, the, the spring clip unlocked, you kind of let this go for a free ride. You don't try to hold them together. So, it does come apart very easily. Just got to be patient. Take your time. Um, the other part is that in my excitement to try a new toy, I didn't lubricate this tube end at all, and it was going into an O-ring, so I should have. That's shame on me. A little bit of, a little bit of transmission fluid on that seal to make things slide easier would have gone a long way, I'm sure. So I will make sure to do that before I reassemble this for real. I'm also going to put a little bit of fresh Loctite on there. You can see there's the uh, factory installed dry stuff there. I like to put a little bit of wet. Make sure that I get a good seal. But quick release, easy. Okay, so we've got two lines on the transmission we're going to have to pop loose this cat's been on there considerably longer than the, the test one I was playing with And it doesn't seem quite as eager to come off. I'm also kind of finding a weird body position now. There we go. Okay. That slid back. I'm actually going to give it a little spray. A little bit of I'm not trying to bathe it, just get a little bit in there. Make things move a little easier. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so I got them both out on the transmission end. Um, I will say it wasn't easy. Uh, there was some corrosion and grime and whatever else. Uh, I gave them a couple of wax with the WD-40 spray to just clean things out and lubricate things a little bit. Um, the upper line was 
not moving at all initially uh, where I would expect it should be able to spin on the uh, O-ring a little bit. It was just kind of seized in there. Um, the lower one was moving initially, but it's uh, a hose with multiple bends right at the end of it. So pulling it straight back away from the fitting is difficult, especially with the drive shaft in the way. I could have dropped the drive shaft. Um, I didn't. Um, it's going to come out sooner or later, but... Uh, when you're doing projects where you've got a limited amount of storage space and it's going to take a while to get things done, I don't like to pull a lot of stuff off ahead of time if I don't know when I'm getting back to it because stuff disappears. You, you pile one thing on top of the other because you got nowhere else to put stuff and it just gets hard to find things. So right now the drive shaft is a little in the way, but it's an inconvenience, not a stoppage. Um, so... I'm leaving it alone. Um, so we got right now the old hoses are still in the truck, the Jeep. Um, they're zip tied in a couple of places along the frame rail. So next thing to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap one end of them with uh, some blue towel and tape just to control the drip. And then cut those zip ties so I can pull them through without leaking ATF all over the inside rail of the frame rail and uh, whatever else, else it drips on. Um, try to limit the amount of mess here. Oh, and the fitting that was seized in the uh, in the radiator. Um, I have this absurd wrench. I think I inherited from my grandfather. Um, it worked really well. Uh, the fittings are, what is that, brass probably, so they were soft, and it was stuck in there, and the proper wrench was not working on it, um, so it rounded off a little bit. I'm not reusing them. This thing didn't care. It got in there, and it tore them out, so if you come across one of these at a store or even a flea market or something, as long as it seems like it still has decent spring tension, I like it. I don't use it a lot. But for stuff like this where you don't care about the thing you're taking out, you just want it out and it's awkward, that thing works really well. All right, I'm going to get after wrapping up these hose ends, cutting zip ties, and pulling these lines out of here. Okay, so this is our real deal OEM style. Mopar uh, transmission cooling lines. They got rubber hose at the front end of them for vibration isolation, a little, little bit of movement. Um, that way it doesn't crack anything that's not supposed to crack. Uh, then this end, it's all hard line. And I'm going to have to finagle that in around transmission, drive shaft, um, exhaust, it just currently dropped, um, make it all fit. So this clamp is the one that actually has the hole in it and that'll go onto that stud on the oil pan. Um, gonna go ahead and try to get the transmission end hooked up. I don't have the fittings in the radiator yet we are starting to lose light um so i'm gonna get after it and see what i can get done i will probably put a little bit of atf or something on the ends of those just to wet them down a little bit so that they slide into those o-rings but the idea is you slide these caps back slide it in until that locks in that lip right there will lock into those springs and then you slide this over to make sure that nothing really disturbs the spring. It really shouldn't happen. These caps should be completely optional, but they're there. So I'm going to use them. Okay, just to wrap up this uh, section about the transmission cooling lines. So these are the lines that were in there. Excuse the paper that I had. Wrapped around there, 
Um, so basically they just cut the hard line off at some point and jab some transmission rated hose. Right. It says right on it, transmission oil cooler. So I don't want to suggest this is wrong. Again, I'm not a transmission guy. I'm not an automatic transmission guy for sure. Um, but this isn't how the factory had it. And it was leaking. So it may have worked for 10 years. I don't know. It's a 2005 Jeep. I have no idea when they made this change and how long it lasted. But the hose has got some areas where it's not in great shape. It was definitely leaking. Um, that that line specifically was leaking. This side wasn't so bad. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to throw the hose away. It's old, it's dirty, it's nasty. I'm going to throw the cutoff ends away. This one barb came out easily, came out clean. It was dry. There was no leak. So maybe what I'll do is throw this one barb in some sort of container and keep it handy so that if I need to make some sort of a trail fix or something you know get some so get some line and there you go a couple of clamps and we're good to go at least as a short-term fix um, but as I said before I really just wanted to put it back to uh, OEM setup because Again, my wife is going to drive this thing. My kids are going to drive it some. They're getting to where they got to learn to drive. Um, one of them's already got his permit. The other one's coming up close and wants to be a Jeeper. So uh, they're going to be driving this thing with less experience than most drivers have. Um, and transmission fluid, trans it, transmission fluid is flammable. It's dangerous. Um, you know, it's not going to spontaneously combust, but this stuff does light up fairly easily. Uh, most of the JK fires that I've heard about have been a cooler line that got melted, blown out, whatever, and put transmission fluid on the exhaust manifold or exhaust system, wherever it was, and yeah, went up on flame. So that was never really an issue with LJ's it's not something that we ever saw in the news a lot so I put it back to factory LJ setup but that's all I got for this part uh, I think the next thing I'm going to attack is the cooling system get that weird old green stuff out and get the OAT stuff in <laughs>